Welcome to the Con Crunch Challenge, where we ask cosplayers to work under a tight time frame to get their cosplays ready. You'll see all their tips and tricks to getting it done and still making it awesome. This is kind of gruesome to watch. I'm Cheryl Sloboda, and in this episode, we meet Cassie. Hi, my name is Cassie, and I'm a cosplayer from Denver, Colorado. Who has only two hours to attack her barbarian belt. I accidentally cosplayed in 2011 before I knew it was a thing. <laughs> but to be more specific, I started cosplaying in 2015. My favorite cosplay currently is the Mord Sith I made for 2018 Denver Pop Culture Con. The second favorite would be Bella Stung. I've been getting into OCs and Bella Stung is an original concept cosplay I made from my D&D character. For today's challenge, I'm going to be making a Viking Barbarian Utility Belt. Welcome, Cassie, to the set of Con Crunch Challenge. How this works here on this set, uh, we give you two hours to complete your project. There will be two opportunities for you to cry for help, which I will tell you about in just a few minutes. But first, we need for you to shop for your supplies. Are you ready for the challenge? Bring it on. Awesome. Let's shop for your supplies. All right. The most difficult parts of my challenge today will be working with faux fur uh, can be difficult. It gets all over the place, it's hard to cut accurately, but I will also be throwing in some weathering, so I think that you can disguise any accidents with weathering. Also, eyelets and grommets I've been doing for several years now, but they are the most frustrating thing, so. Cassie, you have selected your items. Are you ready for the Con Crunch Challenge? Absolutely, I'm ready. Awesome, so I remember I said there were two opportunities to cry for help. Well, you can choose from either me or our color commentator, Cassidy, who you already know yeah. and are friends with, so that's awesome. I think we're getting ready to start. Are you ready? Yeah, let's okay, do it. Okay, let's put two hours on the clock and go, 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 go. Oh, <laughs> all right. So right now I'm laying out some faux leather cut some patterns out. This is the back of the pouch with the base is gonna go on. Pack belt. Cry for help. Uh-oh, <laughs> already? I wow. have never used a Singer heavy duty sewing machine before. Oh, okay, all right. The step I would need assistance with is getting ah, that going. Okay, so this is the spool pin right here. Go ahead and set this like this you go ahead and get your bobbin set up. Or, oh look, there's one already. Oh, I just stuffed it yeah, in Yeah, that's good, okay. But just kidding, I, I can't see where you clasped ah, the thread on. <laughs> gotcha, okay, so snap it in there, and then you just oh, wing that. it around. Yep, just like that. And there's like one little slot there, and now you're ready to go ahead and thread it. You have well, to thread it through the needle. Oh, that's true. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. That, that's that con crunch pressure they talk about. I know, about. right? <laughs> wow, it's so different from mine. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. You should be good to go. Sweet. Thank All you right, very much. You're very welcome. What did you make your pattern pieces out of? This is a Jim and Nick's barbecue bag. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like upcycling. It is Absolutely. upcycling. <laughs> she cuts so carefully. I like it. I think it's important that you don't have raw fabric on the underside, but. If it's a serious crunch, I mean, no one's really gonna see the back. That's true. Mm-hmm. No. Ooh! Oh, oh. 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 oh no. no. Not one of those. <laughs> the felt is the uh, inside lining of the pouch. Okay. It gives it a lot of structure so it doesn't just hang there like a limp noodle. No limp noodles allowed. <laughs> no limp noodles here. <laughs> So I am going to make this have multiple pouches. I want to have options so I can keep my ID and uh, credit card on hand, easy access. So that is what I'm cutting now. Ooh, busting out the faux fur. Yep. 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 Uh, yep. That'll happen. All up in the nostrils. So how do you normally cut your faux fur? So what I will do is pick a spot that I think will look really cool and I will brush it away. I usually uh, opt to cut a little on the large side. You don't want to destroy too much of the length. That's also called the pile. Ooh. Pile, mm -hmm. yes. I always cut my faux fur from the back. Me too. Mm -hmm. She's, She's just going, going for it. it. Yep. <laughs> I can be sneaky. 
Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have three cats. I'm pretty used to the fur. Oh, it's coming over body. here. I know. <laughs> we'll look like we have our cats attacked us. So Cassie, tell me about the costume that this uh, pouch is gonna go with. It's primarily a barbarian style costume, not necessarily inspired by any character, more so inspired by lots of characters. It's definitely an original character design. It is, yeah. I really like the raw look of Barbarian. The reason I chose this challenge, the utility belt, is because a lot of times when you're making costumes, you don't consider sewing pockets into them. So I've personally found it's good to have a utility belt or a pouch or a belt pouch, hip pouch, what have you. So you can have your wallet, your phone, your keys. You don't want to lose any of that at the con or the festival. Okay, so uh, I just finished getting all of the pieces cut out for the pouch itself. I need to create the cut for the belt next. Loves to cling to the table. Yeah, static. <laughs> Trying to figure out if I could come around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's using the edge of the table as a straight edge. That's so smart. Mm -hmm. So you're not measuring the width of the belt at all. You're just eyeballing it? I am, yeah. So I usually can eyeball about three to four inches. Since I'm still uh, a cosplay noob, I don't, I don't have a lot in my collection yet in the way of tools. So I've had to kind of just make do with what I don't, with what I have and don't have. How did you first come up with your pouch pattern? So I use a lot of uh, the historical patterns from like Simplicity and Butterick. It's Butterick, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Butterick. And I've made enough of those to kind of like understand the main structures uh, of a pouch. And I decided that I just wanted to start coming up with my own patterns. So I've deviated from theirs, but you know, essentially using what I've learned from theirs. Oh, what's in there? I think they're D&D &D dice. What? Let's roll for... <laughs> Let's roll for initiative. <laughs> We're gonna roll a d20 here. 19! 19. All I right, you, you better make a, make a note for me which dice that was so <laughs> I can <could, laughs> save it for my next campaign. Okay, so yeah, I have all the pieces cut out and it's good to start sewing. Good, gonna... you have an hour and 35 minutes. Awesome, okay. Yes, yeah, so go ahead and gather everything I need. Keep it close by. So she keeps her pattern pieces pinned to each of the pieces. Go ahead and do start with the belt, the longer piece first. And what we're gonna do is sew it inside out and then flip it. It's amazing how different some of these machines can be. To the sewing part, so that's a it good sign. Yeah. Fast, yeah. There it is. One hour and thirty minutes. This machine be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. I think I'm finally figuring it out. Yeah. It took, uh, it yes. took me a second, and you'll see me reaching for that invisible foot control lever. Foot lever. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mine's like on a different spot, so I keep reaching for it. So you take a lot of these to your, the run fair? I do, yeah. That's my main go-to when it comes to costuming still. Yeah, I've, I've only just been getting into Comic Cons and such. Ah, yes. The flipping part. Yes, this can be difficult. Mm. It helps if you have a really long stick. Yeah, there's a... Uh, these won't be... This is good. He's almost there. Kind of looks like a large earthworm. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those where you can say, we've all been here. <laughs> the longer it is, the more difficult it, it is to turn. It yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I keep thinking she gets there to the end and yep. celebrate. Yeah, I think she did. It's good enough. Good enough. Ah, that's the con cruncher. <laughs> so now are you stitching the end closed or are you top stitching? I am top stitching. This is one of the nice things about barbarians is if it's a little off, chances are it'll look like it was meant to be. Whoop. Ooh. Needle break? No, it just fell out. I think it was a little loose. Oh. 
Okay. All right then. Okay. Yep. Clench my hands. So you're gonna move on to the pouch next? Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and get the front of the pouch done, not the back part, but the front. So you have one hour and 15 minutes left. All right. Thank you for that update. <laughs> oh, uh, the fur. Okay. This is a fluffy fur. It yeah. is a fluffy may fur. may pose a problem, but we'll get it done. Yep. Moving on. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> We're gonna save that piece. We're gonna save that piece. This is the gusset. So this is the piece that's gonna go uh, in between the pouch back and pouch front. Oh, uh, gotcha. Give you give you some more room. Right here. The side and the bottom mm -hmm. piece. So yes. that would be. Hope everyone watching realizes that yes, our spit is in our costumes. <laughs> <laughs> this this is proving to be. Uh, Funny, a funny situation with the missized felt. She's even lining the gusset is what she's mm -hmm. doing. Yep. The felt yeah, there's inside. felt inside the gusset as well. There's still fur. There's still remnants. <laughs> That'll do. All right, so we've got the, the front, front is done. Lined, the gusset lined. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the part that will be hanging on your hip. I am trying to Get, do this in a way where I won't have to do a lot of extra trimming. Hmm. And I like the pattern size, so there's not much seam allowance needed. And you leave a hole just big enough to flip this. Ah, okay. But she just reached right in and grabbed it out. That was quick. Shake it, good measure. <laughs> Give it a shake. And this part is going to be hidden later, so you really don't even have to worry about sealing that off yet because that's where the belt's going to attach. Oh, wait, you have one hour. You're down to one hour. One hour. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> you can hear it going through the multiple layers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first hour was mostly cutting out pattern pieces. Right. Carefully cutting out the fur that we're gonna use. And there's still weathering to come. There's still weathering and attaching it all together. There's grommeting. Yes. Now what's this piece here? This is the uh, credit card slash ID pacing again. This is going to be the flap for for the ID so it doesn't, you know, slip out. My instinct would be to press all these seams. I know. If you have more than two hours, you absolutely can press oh, the seams. Oh, that's part of the crunch. <laughs> Honestly, what you'd want to do is have clips on down on all of these as well. I love putting things into existence that didn't exist before. Getting to look at a pile of materials that you give life to is a really awesome experience. I personally love the cosplay community. I've only had my cosplay Instagram account for two years now, and when I first came to Colorado, I didn't know a lot of people. I think that it's opened up a lot of opportunities for me, and I've made some lifelong friends already. I've met people online from around the world, Australia, Germany, um, places like Florida here I've never been to. The cosplay community is such an overwhelmingly positive, supportive community. There's all walks of life in it and I, I just, I feel very welcome. Yeah. Just might be getting used to this machine. Oh, I like how she's choosing everything except that faux fur piece. <laughs> no. Right now I'm attaching the gusset to the front of the pouch. And there are strings everywhere. In this instance, it's because I've managed to yank more string than necessary out when I am cutting it from the machine. And so this is a pretty complex curve. It is, yes. You want clips for this. This is a, a difficult spot to do without clips. So Cassie, you have 51 minutes left. Are you feeling okay on timing? I think so. My brain is saying it's probably okay, but something could happen, something could go wrong again, and I could lose a little bit of time, but I think I'm safe for now. This is where it could get tricky too, because I have to make sure all the edges met up. Once you take this out and 
flip it, because if you miss a spot, Ooh, you're going to want this is to... one of those make or break spots. Okay, we didn't miss anything. Oh yeah, we did. Yep, just kidding. Oh. Yes, we're good. All right, so this is the next tricky yeah. part. I think we should get a closer yeah. look. <laughs> so you'll be zigzagging this directly onto that back base. Yes. Oh, okay. I love round edges. They're so fun. <laughs> and I did make this one a little too big. But what I could do okay. is just pull this just over. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We just want to make sure we leave room for the pocket later. 45 minutes left. Right. 45 minutes. I personally think that the zigzag stitch adds to some of that historical look. I think that it also contains this really well because you're going back and forth on top of the directly over where the gusset meets the, the base. So now we're pinning the credit card pouch? Yes. And does it, it gets a flap also. It does. I wasn't going to zigzag this one, but I think I will. So our other cosplayers have named the machine. What would you name this machine? Am I allowed to know what the other names were? Ah! Oh. <laughs> after you tell us. Um, puncture. Oh! <laughs> I like it, it's edgy. That is. Did not give myself enough allowance here. I messed up the back, but that's okay. You just go with it because a lot of times when these things happen and you're at the con or the fair, you're probably the only person who notices. Go back to normal. I think she's not even gonna use, maybe she's not even gonna use the belt. Yep, oh. yep. Because what, what she's decided is that the fur is very thick. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't, yes. it doesn't need the back. Now, what I like to do when I'm sewing fur onto things is make my stitch extra long. And then mm -hmm. if any of that fur gets caught down in the stitch, you can brush it out and it'll slip out of that wider stitch easy. Oh, punch a hole. It's an enormous hole puncher. That's some serious hardware. <laughs> Doesn't get in there quite enough. Wow. All right, let's take a look at this thing. You can almost like work out with this thing. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm on You got a handshake real nice. Right. Oh, oh. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's got a punch She's and it's like... also my, it's my punch and my crunch. Oh, oh, it's such your grommets too. Listen to that. It's very satisfying. And what are you threading it through? This is a wooden toggle. Bring it down in and... Give it a good knot. Okay. Uh, self-measure. <laughs> yep. Scientific self-measure. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> little off, but that's okay. That happened pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. that did went faster than I thought. Uh. <laughs> getting wild with it. <laughs> <laughs> what did, no. wait, what just happened? Oh my I gosh. I figured that was coming <laughs> off at some point. So tell us why you made that decision. <laughs> why you oh, no, that was the plan all along. <laughs> I just, that was the plan. I just was what? tricking you. Cry for help. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah. Will you please open my paint? Oh God. Ah. <laughs> I noticed it was sealed earlier and that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> she gave you a difficult job, too. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. You have 21 minutes. Excellent. <laughs> oh, everybody, everything's moving out the way. Ooh, oh, what's that? So what I've brought with me are some uh, different types of powders that you can use for your weathering effect. Yeah, this is acrylic paint. You want to use a little bit of brown, a little bit of black. Uh, what I like to do is just go wild yeah. on this and get the edges. Oh, wow. Uh, you, whenever I run out of those hair powders, um, I refill them with stuff like charcoal powder. Um, huh. In this one specifically, there is charcoal, cinnamon, ginger, and flour. Like the spices? Yep. Really? Yep. 
<laughs> it just gets that color that I really like. This is pretty cool. And while it's wet, that's a good time to go ahead and start tossing some of this on there. Yep, getting that cinnamon. <laughs> Come on, you gotta get your hands in there. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like to go ahead and uh, weather the underside of where you're gonna be. Um, oh, like the part where you're the putting belt through the rings folds because, over. Yes, because right. it, it will be visible. And if you don't remember to weather that side, you'll just have a weird clean flip spot. Okay, and I wanna add a little bit of a lighter one. I need to spray seal. Nope. What about hairspray? Hairspray works. Hairspray absolutely works. Gotta get that matte look going. Oh, so it's like, oh, messed up fur. I'm gonna go ahead and just like paint some of these edges underneath. Oh, Ooh. look at that. This like completely transformed in the last 10 minutes. Gets all that powder you just put on there to stick nicely. Three minutes, 30 seconds. Pretty much done at this point. Oh. Yep. Wait, what? what? We're done? You're done? We're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> wow. Cassie, you did it. You met the Conference Challenge. High five. High five. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pass. I will pass as well. <laughs> but uh, you did it. Congratulations. I'm very excited. How do you feel about your project? I feel really good. You know, there's a couple mistakes in there, but um, I, I don't shy away from mistakes, especially when it's a weathered project like this. I think it builds character to the piece and yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Cassie, congratulations on completing the Con Crunch Challenge. Woohoo! Thank you. <laughs> you did it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, to congratulate you on winning uh, in time and finishing in the two hours, you're going to get a fabulous prize pack from R&K Distributing and So Much Cosplay and a $300 gift certificate what? from Singer Sewing. <laughs> And they are uh, going to be sending that to you. It's so very exciting. That is amazing. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though. <laughs> thank you. Congratulations. It's well earned. Yeah, thank and uh, thank you again for being part of the challenge. I love being paid to be stressed. <laughs>